So uh, my name is John DiCarlo. I'm a Chief Technology Officer of uh, Columbia Tech and Coughlin Companies. Um, we're we're a, a company that's focused on product commercialization. So we're quite different than everyone else who's spoken here. Our sole focus is turning technology into products. That's that's our mission in life. We're not research scientists. We're we're not um, theorists. We're not validators, we're not physicists. So our job is to do good applied engineering, manifest that technology into a product. So that's, that's really our role. So I just wanted to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about who we were so you could see how these different skill sets of everybody that's spoken today complement each other. So uh, we work for a privately held company. Uh, the company's been around since the 1800s ironically started in electrification uh, and um, has been through many manifestations and we're currently, uh, our whole focus is on product, product concept to commercialization. So our core strengths involve accelerating our clients' time to market by bo having both manufacturing and engineering under one roof and focusing on how to best apply um, good engineering to those products and make it a manufacturable product and deliver it to the marketplace. Just a little more about that. So to give you an idea of the scale of our business, um, we're about 500 people, 300,000 square feet under roof, um, north of $200 million in sales. Um, I believe we're the right kind and right size of company to deal with a technology like this. You know, we're not a Siemens, we're not a GE. We're small, we're nimble, and we're focused on the goal. So, this is um, intended to be a. Uh, let me get the pointer here. So, a little button at the top. Oh, thank you. I yep. got it. So, this is the uh, product development uh, funnel, and we've done this to we've delivered this to characterize where we sit in the world here. Um, what you see up here is, is where Randy and his team has lived for many years, um, <coughs> generating an idea, developing a proof of concept, doing concepts of feasibility, and, um, and uh, bringing this product and capability uh, closer to uh, realization. Our focus is to, to do prototyping, piloting, building, and making sure uh, products are ready for market. And a big part of that is um, making the product sustainable, refined, and also making it compliant to regulatory uh, standards. So these are uh, in our manufacturing environment. These are some of the uh, standards we adhere to. Uh, we're an ISO registered uh, manufacturing organization. Uh, we adhere to many, many standards from different independent nationally regulated labs. We work with these labs extensively for verifying our compliance with regulation. And uh, in this design and our role in this, our goal is to take some of this, take this technology and package a system and control this in such a way that it's a repeatable build, it meets regulatory requirements, and uh, we can also learn a lot from it. That was brought up a few minutes ago. As this platform matures, the rate at which things will be understood and refined will go up quite significantly because uh, a test that might take a day or two to set up could take a minute um, on this new platform. Um, again, being a private company, uh, we have a very narrow focus, and we're focused uh, on the highest level of integrity as it relates to any product development and engineering. We uh, have a proven team, and our focus is on rapid prototyping and transitioning and taking all the various steps it takes to get to a reliable product. So on, on the Sun Cell, um, we've begun work uh, to package this unit. We've been kicked off in what we call a phase zero development. And in that phase zero, we're creating a definition of what the initial prototype is supposed to perform to. Um, we, uh, our chief responsibility is to control this process so that it's sustainable and secondarily to package it in, in a product that's uh, deliverable. Um, so in that phase uh, zero, we're, we're near conclusion of that. We expect um, by November 1st um, that we would be uh, ready to move into the next phase is where we start hard design on the ancillary parts of the system. We have 
Randy's team has developed the core of the system. Uh, our responsibility is to do the applied engineering to control and, and deliver that system. This is one of the work products as an example of, this is the highest level block diagram of the system as, as, an, as applied engineers as to how we would control this system. Um, and whether the system's large or small, what you'll see is many of the blocks will be the same, it's just a matter of scale. But just to reinforce the point on where we are in this process, uh, we've had a relationship with uh, Brilliant Light for a few years, and we've been through some of the earlier manifestations of fuel delivery and handling of materials. This latest um, implementation has basically uh, overcome every barrier that we had, had seen as engineers um, in terms of realizing this technology. So the biggest breakthrough that we see as engineers is two things. One is the, uh, is, is the liquid delivery of the uh, silver, and secondly, turning it into an electrode. Um, that solves a whole bunch of problems because while everybody gets excited about heat at brilliant light power, as engineers, we don't get that excited when we see things melting and we, we need to control it. <laughs> so so, so, um, so that's, that's been a, it's been a wonderful development. Um, and it's come on quite quickly. Um, so based on that technology, we got kicked off um, for our phase zero evaluation. We're currently close to completing that, and our body of work is to complete uh, a skeletal, um, not a skeletal, a detailed requirements document, a skeletal bill of material, properly sized components for the scale of implementation, and a tentative package, and our anticipation is to start to go to hard design, as I mentioned, uh, starting in November. And we will be bolting together the first pieces of an initial prototype in January. So this is a multi-phase process. That's, no by, that's by no means the end of the process. But in, in that case, we're focused on getting the unit put together as a whole. We're not optimized for size. We're not optimized for cost. The goal is to create a sustainable process and learn more about the process and then design for optimization of, of, uh, of cost and size. So, um, so as we uh, build the initial, uh, initial prototype, we'll be iterating this design and we anticipate based on the performance that we've seen in this unit here, even though we haven't built, built the controls yet, that we'll be ready for an initial field test after iterating our prototype in January. Um, probably once. Um, that will lead to additional data on, on how to best package the system. And we expect to uh, collect that data during this period and continue to refine and, and go into a revised design for, uh, for pilot design six months later. So uh, let's see. So the one thing I'd like to comment about this, too, um, is even though this looks like a relatively complex control scheme, to reinforce Randy's point, the engineering we're doing and the controls we're, we're using are for the most part off the shelf. There's custom designs and packaging and things like that. But for, ma for many of the subcomponents, we, we're, you know, we're buying motors. We're not inventing a pump technology. We're not inventing a control system technology. We're just doing applied engineering. And I, I think that's, that will allow us to get to a goal to, to control this process uh, you know, very quickly. And again, because of technology is such a great breakthrough, there is an opportunity to continue to reduce the cost by making more specialized subsystems over time that run increasing, increasingly reliable and, and cost less. So that's it. How much time do you have in the, in the gathering of information? I looked at the timelines, and, and yeah. there's, it's a six-month pilot, but I'm going to gather the test data. How much time do you think you're going to need to, to beta? Yeah, this is a little, uh, a little bit of a misnomer. Um, the gathering of test data goes on through the entire six-month process, so we'll be collecting. We're not going to really stop testing here. Uh, it will be initial test data, which will drive further design environments, but th this testing will continue through this whole process. So we'll be testing right up to pilots, even the previous generation product. Same is true up here. While this prototype is being built, uh, after it's been built and tested, we'll be iterating the design here, but continuing to build that, that system. Okay, good. Thank you, John. So uh, next we have uh, Brad uh, Siskovich. He's